the idea that you can just talk. And even if you kind of understand mentally, like where your issues are or what you need to resolve, you can't unlock a lot of those unless you actually combine it with yeah. the physical, you know? It's a really kind of I don't, think, I don't think anybody, I don't think you can, you, you can cure yourself from what happened to you. No. That has to stay there for a reason, all right? Yeah. And every time I've tried to get rid of these things, you just, you make them more present. Yeah. So I just like, you're there, you do what you do. Yeah. I'm going to have a life. Yeah. And then your life just becomes bigger and bigger until this thing gets squeezed out. Right. This was mainly taking up all the room. Yeah. And I just didn't focus on fighting it. Because you're not anything worth fighting. You're a memory. So I'm just, I'm like, okay, so if memories can affect my behavior, then why don't I start writing something that will eventually become my history? Right. See what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, so I just start, I just start, I became the writer. Yeah, but in order to do that, you first had to expose the memories, right? Mm -hmm. And you had to, in a way, accept them, right? You, you talk about, you talk about how you, you don't, you didn't want to, you don't want to fight it anymore. Mm. Am I right in thinking that that kind of in a way is like just saying, okay, I accept that that happened and I accept that that has informed and affected me and my sure, yeah. behavior to the world and I'm not going to fight that and pretend that that doesn't exist yeah, or hide it. I acknowledge away. how dangerous it is. Yeah. I know, I know the consequences of <clears throat> um, repeating that story. Yeah. So I just got busy creating a new one. You know what I mean? And just came one word I came across that just tipped everything for me. Reverence is the cure to everything. You know yeah. what I mean? If you constantly, when you're constantly thinking about bad stuff, yeah, it's not a, yeah. a reverent state. Yeah, you can't be You can't have gratitude there. Yeah. And then you know, I just started just tiny little bits because remember I was taking this very ugly blob mm -hmm. that nobody liked. Sure. And was, yeah. and I was offering it life, and it went for me. Yeah. Me? Are you sure? I'm like, yeah, let's drink some water. Just to sit. And it literally started in micro steps <coughs> like that. Because sometimes the argument was so big. Sure. You don't deserve to be here. I'd start like running, which was good for me. Might help me breathe more, see more. And then all of a sudden it was like, what are you doing this for? That's not for you. Health and happiness, that's not for you. Remember who you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Now it's just squeak. My life is so full. And I identify now, I used to identify with being a tough guy because I needed that to survive, to stop being bullied. I had to move a certain way and look at a certain way so that I didn't look like a victim, mm. to give myself some sort of peace. Then I just got into, into movement, then I got into being careful what I eat to a degree. And understanding sleep and just basically and then but where did that come from how did that was that just totally self kind of motivated or algorithms are a great thing as soon as you press on something on the internet everything related to it starts popping up yeah and i just yeah. started going with the flow so you just fell down a rabbit hole of yeah like and then it was like that lecture happened to be there when i was looking at that right and then oh, okay what's that then? but you were searching yeah pretty much when i just I wanted to be a specialist at something. Mm. I was always intrigued by mass, like samurai warriors and, and like great fighters. And I wanted to be excellent at something too. And then um, all the things that I was identifying myself with, there, there, there was too much personal consequence to that. Mm. And then I just identify as a movement machine. That's it. I'm a movement machine and that, that in order for me to be that is bonuses it means I have to eat a certain way and I have right. to take care of that right. so yeah so now I'm like into tea who would have thought it huh? do you know what I mean <laughs> instead of a crate of beer <laughs> you know what I mean right so so this is Jade Star um, this is a, a 2009 aged white tea so it's a combination of um different pickings but the, the point is that it was it's been aged for now eight years um, and 
can see how dark it's out. You can see what white tea normally looks like with this like beige kind of green colour. So it's kind of um, gone through its aging process. In China, they say that if it gets past three years, no, five years, seven years is a treasure. Is the Chinese kind of approach to white tea? So it also becomes slightly medicinal um, in its effect. So have a sniff. There's two types. There's two types of tea that that um, generally are the more uh, have more ability to get you kind of more tea drunk. Um, one of them is is the white tea, but it's aged white tea. So white tea when it's fresh, some lovely tea, but when it's aged, it has it, something happens to it when it ages. I don't know. So what's the feeling that you get? It's kind of like. Um, it can change, so sometimes it can put you in a very kind of reflective mood where you can be kind of quite thoughtful and just kind of not necessary, not antisocial, but not like you're not like you know running around laughing. It's more like a kind of sit down and have a I don't know the equivalent of a whiskey compared to a vodka. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Right. It's like it's more like I'm going to kind of silly chill, but it kind of sets you off on very kind of creative thought. Other types of tea can get you quite hyper and quite like, you know, want to like, you know, more giggly and more energetic. But those not in are, the caffeine way. And, and, so, and so, yeah, those are the raw puas. The raw puas tend to, to have a little bit more of a caffeine hit. Barry about GABA mm. as I mentioned you guys mentioned that you can actually get it through tea certain teas yeah right? so all tea has GABA in it okay. but there are some oolongs it was invented by the Japanese in the 70s or 80s or something they, they figured that if you take when you take the leaf in the process of it um, oxidising if you then take away the air from it if you put it in like a nitrogen rich um, tank or whatever then it radically increases the GABA content which is suffers from ADHD. Okay. He um, he's trained every day. He's on he's on mild medications for ADHD, which has has made a vast difference. He still has anxiety and depression, which goes when he trains. He right. goes to the gym every day. Right. Mild medication has been taken maybe two or three times a day. Yeah. But recently he started taking GABA. As a supplement for yeah. Yeah. Which I experimented with something for myself. Yeah. Because that mood gives you more bounce. Yeah. Which definitely works with him. He said it's ups and downs. Yeah, sure. Well, this is, is what's been happening. Is yeah, this is what's been happening. It's like uh, a lot of, <laughs> it's the classic thing, isn't it? A lot of scientists say, no, it's not possible, but everyone's doing it and sure. going, no, actually, it's really helping. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and so it's kind of, um, yeah, GABA is a neurotransmitter that basically acts like a kind of a break on you, on, on the kind of stress response. So it's like, it, it's calm but not sleepy it doesn't make you tired but it basically kind of acts like a break it just kind of chills you out a little bit yeah, I use lithium orotate for that okay you know what I mean not the ones that they give the psych therapy yeah. you know, the patients but it's like 50 milligrams of basalt you know yeah yeah yeah. and that I can definitely feel that I'm more like this yeah than that sure